Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. In this video, we're going to look at rewriting absolute value functions piecewise. This is part two. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'll link it up here where I go over how to rewrite absolute value functions piecewise, but using more basic functions, linear functions. In this video, we're going to consider a few more advanced examples. So before we get started, let's just remember the definition for absolute value of x. Absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and the opposite of x if x is less than 0. So remember, what this means is if the quantity inside the absolute value bars is not negative, is greater than or equal to 0, then when you take the absolute value, nothing happens. You just get back x. However, if the quantity inside those absolute value bars is less than 0, then when you take the absolute value of it, you make it positive, right? Which means you multiply by another negative or you take the opposite of whatever's inside. So this is the foundation, this definition for which we're going to rewrite absolute value functions piecewise. First example, we have f of x equals the absolute value of x squared minus 2x. So the quantity inside is a quadratic function. We can think of the graph of a quadratic function, maybe visualize it in our head, it's a parabola. And what I'm interested in finding out are where the quantity inside the absolute value is equal to zero. So to start, I'm going to set x squared minus 2x equal to zero. Maybe you can just look and identify the zeros. If not, we just need to take out an x, factor out that GCF, and I can see clearly the zeros occur at zero and two. So to get a general idea of what's going on, I'm just gonna draw a rough sketch of this parabola. I don't need the y-axis, guys, because I just want to know where it's positive and negative. I don't really care what the y-values are. So here are the zeros, 0 and 2. The parabola is opening upward. I know this because coefficient of x squared is positive. And here are my x-intercepts or my zeros. Also, we know the vertex occurs halfway between, which is at 1. Okay, so here's my parabola. Now when I take the absolute value of it, whatever portion is lying below the x-axis will be made positive, right? So it will get reflected above the x-axis. So that's what it's going to look like. Where the graph is already positive, nothing happens. And then where the graph is negative, it gets reflected. So how can I rewrite f of x without the absolute value sign and just rewrite it as a piecewise function? You would break it up as follows. So you would say, okay, f of x is equal to whatever's inside the absolute value as is, x squared minus 2x, when it's already above the x-axis. When does that happen? For x less than 0 and for x greater than 2. That's right here and right here. You could have put x less than or equal to 0 and greater than or equal to 2. You could do this also. It doesn't matter. All right? Now, the portion in the middle where it's negative, the absolute value bars, right, makes it positive. So it's going to take the opposite of that quantity. And this is when x is between 2 and 0. Notice I did not make that inequality inclusive because I included 0 and 2 on the part of the piecewise function above. If I included them here, then you can't include them here. Okay, so no doubling up. This is a function. And then from here, what you would most likely do, if you're in calculus, is maybe take a derivative, take a limit, or integrate this function. And stay tuned, I'll have videos covering how to do that coming up soon. But I just want to get this foundational topic under control. Do you want to graph f of x? We did a rough sketch up above, but let's throw that y-axis in there so we can get a good feel for what's going on. 
So that's my y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And where's all the excitement happening between 0 and 2? And I'll just put a couple more values over here. 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. So I know my x-intercepts are here. 0, 0, 2, 0. The vertex is going to be where x is equal to 1. Actually at 1, 1. And then this part was reflected, remember? And then this part of the parabola opens upward. All right, nice. Good. Now that we have another quadratic example under control, let's look at something more advanced. Example two, we have f of t equals t cubed minus 3t squared minus 10t. And I'm going to show you how to rewrite this function piecewise using a slightly different approach, just slightly. Remember, we know that we don't need to take or to do anything when we take the absolute value of something that's already positive. So I basically want to know when is the stuff inside the absolute value bars already positive. That's what I want to know. So I'm going to set that quantity greater than zero. And then to find the zeros again, I'm going to try to factor. Hopefully it does. If not, you got to do something else clever. So we have t times t squared minus 3t minus 10 is greater than zero. And sure enough, this factor. So I have t times t minus 5 times t plus 2 is greater than zero. So to figure out when the expression on the left is greater than zero, I want to first identify the zeros. So that would happen when t is equal to zero, when t is equal to five, and when t is equal to negative two. Okay, so those are the zeros of the expression, t times t minus five times t plus two. I'm gonna list them all on a number line. So here's negative two, here's zero, here's five. It doesn't need to be to scale. And what I'm going to do now is test each of the intervals here. So from negative infinity to negative 2, from negative 2 to 0, from 0 to 5, and from 5 to infinity. And see on which of these intervals is this expression positive and where is it negative, basically. Um, I didn't make any of the endpoints inclusive. We can just deal with that later when we write the piecewise function. So say we're checking the interval from negative infinity to negative 2. Pick any number in there, like negative 3, and then substitute it in for t. So negative 3, that would make that first factor negative. Negative 3 minus 5, that's also negative. I don't care what it is, it's just negative. And then negative 3 plus 2, that's also negative. So a negative times a negative times a negative means the expression would be negative from negative infinity to negative 2. Okay, let's check the next interval from negative 2 to 0. Say we test with negative 1, t equals negative 1. So if I plug in negative 1 for t here, that's going to be negative. If I plug in negative 1 for t here, negative 1 minus 5, that's also negative. And then if I plug in negative 1 here, negative 1 plus 2 is positive. So negative times a negative times a positive, that's positive. All right, I'm going to continue the process between 0 and 5. Say we test with 1, t, that would be positive, 1 minus 5, negative 1 plus 2, positive, so we have a negative here, and then something like 6 or 42 or 100, positive, positive, positive. Okay, so everything's positive here. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means when I take the absolute value of this quantity right here, where it's already positive, Taking the absolute value doesn't do anything at all. However, where it's negative, then taking the absolute value means we need to multiply everything by another negative or take the opposite. So let's use that information now to rewrite our function piecewise. Let me move this out of the way. 
Okay, so remember the function was called f of t. So f of t was the absolute value of t cubed minus 3t squared minus 10t. So it will be equal to whatever's inside the absolute value bars as is when that expression is already positive. So where's that happen? Between negative 2 and 0. I'll make these inclusive. And when it's greater than 5, I'll make this one inclusive as well. Now, when I take the absolute value, I need to take the opposite of t cubed minus 3t squared minus 10t, wherever it's negative. And this happens when t is less than negative 2 and when t is between 0 and 5. Notice those ones I did not make inclusive because I made all of the inequalities above inclusive. Okay? You can mix and match as your little heart desires. Just don't double up or skip anything okay good so i got one more for you you already saw you got a sneak peek we have example three f of x equals the absolute value of 3x minus 9 over x plus 1. so i wanted to include taking the absolute value of a rational function because you have to deal with these in a very careful way so i'm interested in knowing precisely when 3x minus 9 over x plus 1 is positive, right? You guys, you have to be careful. Inequalities, they're high maintenance. Think of them that way. They've got all these additional rules and stipulations when you're working with them. And one thing to be careful is that you are not allowed to just multiply through by the LCD or clear out fractions when it includes a variable quantity in an inequality, okay? If this was an equal sign instead, yeah, for sure, I'd multiply both sides by x plus 1, but you are not allowed to do that in an inequality. Why? You lose information. The factor of x plus 1 in the denominator, it controls the sign of this expression right here. So when you multiply through by it, you're losing so much information about what's happening on both sides of negative 1. So the thing to do instead is find the zeros of the numerator and the denominator, list them out on a number line, and test the intervals like we did earlier, okay? So resist the urge to clear out fractions when variable quantities are involved. To find the zeros, I'm gonna factor out a three. If you don't need to, that's fine. You're like, I already got it, the zeros are when x is equal to 3 and when x is equal to, yes, you include the zeros from the denominator on the number line. Now, remember, this is a restriction. So technically, x cannot equal that negative 1. If you want to remind yourself right now, do it. Okay, it would make everything undefined. But I do still need to list it on my number line because, remember, that factor of x plus 1 controls the sign of everything on the left-hand side of the inequality. So again, we're going to test. Let me write out my intervals now. So from negative infinity to negative 1, and remember, we're not including the negative 1. Then the next interval is from negative 1 to 3, and then the last one's from 3 to infinity. So pick a number between negative infinity and negative 1. Say you test with x equals negative 2. Okay? So if you plug in negative 2 here, that's negative 6 minus 9. That's negative divided by a negative, that means everything in this interval is positive. Between negative 1 and 3, you could test with 0. So if you plug in 0 for x, the numerator is negative, denominator is positive, so everything in here is negative. And then from 3 to infinity, you can test with 4 or anything larger. So this is going to be positive, positive, positive. Okay, so from here we had f of x equals absolute value of 3x minus 9 over x plus 1. Now remember, we're going to leave everything inside alone as is wherever that expression was already positive, which is here and here. 
So that's the case if x is less than negative 1. You cannot put less than or equal to because negative 1 is not in the domain. It's a restriction, remember. And if x is greater than or equal to 3. Or I should say technically. And then we're going to take the opposite of 3x minus 9 over x plus 1 if x is greater than negative 1 and less than 3. I'm not including the 3 here because I already included it up above. And negative 1 doesn't get included anywhere because it's a restriction. Sorry, negative 1. And that's it. So that concludes the video. If you feel like you need more examples of just solving polynomial and rational inequalities, I will link a video here from my pre-calculus video lecture series. And then stay tuned because my plan is to go over how to find limits involving absolute value functions, take their derivatives, and integrate them. All essential if you're studying calculus. So stay tuned. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and share it with somebody else who you think would enjoy or benefit from it.